everyone. Today I'm going to do a new Shop My Stash video. The past couple of months I did first a January Shop My Stash, then in February I actually came back and did a review of all of my January products and a February March Shop My Stash. I grouped it together into two months just because I knew that February and March both would be quite busy months. Granted things kind of took a turn in March and they still were very busy but in a very different way. But basically I first tried a one month shop my stash and then I switched over to a two month shop my stash just with my schedule. I think considering we are all right now quarantined and stuck at home and even though I am still doing quite a lot of work from home, I feel like I can try a month long shop my stash again, especially because it's going to be a very curated shop my stash and you'll see what I mean once we get into the actual video. But the one thing that I don't think I'm going to do this time around is go back and review all of the products I selected for February, March. I think I'm going to do a separate video about that just because I worry that it's going to get way too long. In February and March, I did a theme where I chose products that were all brand new in my collection, things that I had not yet swatched or played with. And I want to just dedicate a little bit more time to the ones I did actually get a chance to try and not feel rushed. So if you want to see that video I'll link it but if you'd like to see what I've gone ahead and selected for the month of April then please keep on watching. So you might ask who decides that April in the midst of the world pandemic is a good time to do a shop my stash of all luxury products? You might ask Natalia aren't you being a bit insensitive to the world? And to that I will say that possibly yes. However, I'm also stuck at home just like the rest of us and I have a few more expensive items and I decided that if I can't pull them out now when the doom and the gloom is hovering pretty much literally right now over New York City, then when else? Like wouldn't this be the perfect time for me to say screw it all, I'm going to pull out my most expensive product and I'm going to enjoy the crap out of them. So that's what I'm doing. We are gonna do a luxury month, or at least as luxury as I have in my collection. I've pulled out the most expensive products I could find <laughs> that I own, and I would like to see if I can use some of these throughout the month of April. So in some of my later videos, some of them might not even happen until May, you're probably gonna see a bunch of these products in action. I've pre-filmed a few videos and I'm really behind in editing. So some of these products, I'll use them, but you won't see them immediately. I'm filming this on April 10th, so it's gonna be more like three weeks. I tried to A, not pick too much, and B, I don't have too much expensive makeup. So we're gonna go in face order for primer. The most expensive, surprisingly enough, actually, is one of my favorites is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. I forget always how expensive this is. This is $42 for a one ounce primer. I was sure that my Becker primers would be the most expensive ones. So I at first pulled that out and then I, for some reason, I was looking at my primers and I was like, huh, maybe I should price check some of these. And it turns out this is the most expensive one I own. So we're going to bust that out. It's brand new. Original price of this would be the most expensive I own. This is the Becker Aqua Luminous Perfecting Foundation in Fair. I I have used this a few times but I don't remember what I thought of it. It's one of these dropper foundations so it's a very liquidy. I thought for being at home and also for kind of more springy type weather this might work nice so we're gonna see. Might be a little dark. If it doesn't work I'll pull in something else but I wanted to just give it a try. It is the most expensive foundation I have and I figured this would be fun to try out. For concealers I chose two. I chose a Becca concealer that I worry might be a a little too dark, B has gone bad. Uh, this is the Aqua Luminous Perfecting Concealer and this one is also in fair. It had some separation when it was in my makeup drawers. I shook it up and it seems to be better now but honestly it also smells a little off so I might watch this on my skin, see if I react to this or maybe do some research and figure out what is this supposed to actually smell like because I feel like it has a little bit of a rotten fish smell. Mmm, yummy. So yeah, yeah, not sure about this. So just in case this doesn't work out and it has gone bad and I will end up having to declutter it, I busted out my Tarte Shape Tape. I have it in Fair Beige. I'm not a fan of Shape Tape to be honest, but I figured I should give it another try. I haven't used this in a very long time. It is 
still good it smells actually really nice and it is the most expensive concealer i own i'm not sure how much the becca one is i know i bought it at tg max so i didn't pay full price for it anyways but i figured it's becca it must also be quite pricey so i threw it in here plus i want to see has it really gone bad or not for powder i have this by terry hyaluronic powder i've haven't used this in a while, but when I used to use it, I remember absolutely loving it. So actually, this would be perfect. I'd like to use it again and see how I like it. I've been so focused on some of my Project Pan items, and I will have an update. I've just been neglecting all my other powders, and it would be actually really nice to do something different for a change. For face products, my most high-end brands are both in palette format. For bronzer and highlighter and such, I am going to use my Kevin Aquan The Contour a book volume 2 palette i believe this is like 60 dollars maybe even more 65 i don't remember of course if you have watched any of my videos even though i've probably only put out about 10 so far in total on youtube you know that in my current financial situation i would never be able to purchase this at full price I'm not against it. I love watching other luxury channels, but I cannot afford products like this. So TJ Maxx to the rescue. I bought this for $15 at TJ Maxx. For $15, oh boy, is this an amazing palette. We have here a cream contour, a cream highlight, a powder highlight, and a sculpting powder. They call it a sculpting powder. I use it kind of like a hybrid of uh, contour and bronzer just depending on how I'm using it. I actually have all four of these products on my cheeks today. I do really, really enjoy it, and I figured I'd like to use it some more this month. So, plus it gives me four eyeshadows to play with. So that could be fun, even though I do have other eyeshadows later on in this project. So that's gonna be my face palette. For blush, I'm gonna go with my Hourglass Luminous Blush Palette. And this comes in three colors, Luminous Flush, Incandescent Electra, and mood exposure. I just filmed a spring blush, favorite spring blushes video, and actually you will see this make an appearance in that video. It's not the blush I have on me today, but I really wanna use this. I remember absolutely loving it, but I haven't used it in a little while, so perfect time I would really like to. I know I have that highlight in the Kevin Aucoin palette, but I also have this Laura Mercier highlighter. This is in Highlight 01. And one day I will have to do a ranking my highlighters. And um, all I can say is this, if I do do that video, will definitely be in the top three. I absolutely adore this highlighter. It is probably the only highlighter I have where you can clearly see some usage. Like the dome is flattening out, especially on one side. I guess it's just how I must put my brush in there. I don't know if you guys can see anything. I don't know what I'm doing. Regardless, this is a beautiful highlighter. It's not like a bang, see you from the moon sort of highlighter, but I thought actually right now that's perfect. The only other product I've pulled out is one eyeliner and a bunch of lipsticks. So for eyeliner, the most expensive one I found was a NARS eyeliner. I have two NARS eyeliners, and this one I haven't really used a lot. This is a coal liner. It's like a dusty bronze, like an antique bronze, and it does have a little bit of shine and shimmer to it here. Let me do a little swatch right there for you guys. Can you see that? Yeah, so I think this will go really nicely with some of the eyeshadows that I have chosen for this month. So I figured I would throw in the NARS eyeliner, the co liner in here. For eyeshadow, I decided to go with the most expensive brand I have anything from, and that is Natasha Denona. Now, I only have two palettes from Natasha Denona. One, I actually regret purchasing. I bought it used, and I haven't even used it on my eyes yet, but just the condition it came in, didn't seem like you know it was true to the photos and the swatches aren't that great and I feel like it's formed hard pan in a lot of shadows and I know this is one of those palettes that did get mixed reviews from Natasha Denona but I've always really wanted one of her larger palettes one day I still would like to have one that is in better condition but the only one I have right now is her sunset palette I don't know how old this is but I'm going to finally give it some love I know somebody else has definitely loved on it but I'm gonna finally give it some love this month 
I think it's time. I think I was just so disappointed by the condition that it came in and how crumbly some of the shades were that I just kind of refused to use it. Like some of them really look like they have hard pan. This one and this one, like they almost have like, they have that rough texture already forming in there, like with the little bumps and stuff. I've sanitized it. I'll do it again before I use it. And I'm sure the person who I bought it from probably did as well. But of course, just in case, I made sure to sanitize it. I mean, I am excited to use it because maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe on the eyes, this is going to be gorgeous. And for the past several months, I've been neglecting this palette just because I'm mad at it. So, and then the last purchase I believe I ever made before I went on my no buy this year was of course back in December of 2019. And that is this little mini gold palette from Natasha Denona. I have used this a few times. I do love it. And I actually keep meaning to use it more. So I figured perfect month to do that. My luxury month what could be better. Okay, and then we're gonna go through a bunch of lippies and we'll be done for today. I'm really trying to work hard, guys, on learning how to film shorter videos. For some reason, even though I don't feel like I say a lot, I guess I'm just very rambly and so many of my videos, if you go and watch, are like 30, 40, 50 minutes long. And it's like, really, nobody wants to watch you for that long, Natalia, seriously. Don't be so full of yourself, get it together. So we've got a bunch of lippies. I have six products in front of me. What do we want to start with? Let's start with the very first luxury lipstick I ever purchased for myself. And that is this guy right here. This is the Yves Saint Laurent. I no longer, unfortunately, know the number of this. I want to say maybe it was 14 or 11 because it's totally rubbed off. When I first got it, I wore this a lot and I wear this a lot in the summertime. So you can see there's definitely some use on this. This is what I have left and I haven't used it though in quite a while so i figured at least even if it's just one day later this month we're walking around the house i'm gonna have me a shiny bright fuchsia pink lip on and it's gonna be great then i have two little minis that i got as a perk with the purchase you know how sephora does with a code like you'll get something if you spend 25 or 35 dollars i think both of these minis came from those and these are both from tom ford i have the one one in Indian Rose and then I have one in uh, La... oh gosh, it's 03 La Mepri? Mepris? La Mepri? I have no idea. I'm so sorry. I have no idea. So this is the ultra rich lip color and this is just says lip color. So this is their Rouge... Uh... oh god, I shouldn't even try it. I don't speak French. Regular lipstick, ultra rich lipstick. That's all I'm gonna go with. Different packaging, obviously. I'm guessing this was maybe from like a special summer collection or something and they were giving the free samples. So Indian Rose, I've worn more. Beautiful color, really, really beautiful, rosy color. This is like the perfect everyday color and I really should use it more. I don't know what I've been doing. And then this is of course more of a summer, spring, summer color. It's like a bright coral. Definitely not a color that I wear often. This is a bit out of my comfort zone, but again, luxury month. Whatever I had luxury is what we're gonna try out this month. I have worn this a couple of times, but not probably too much more than that. And I remember liking it, but it wasn't anything wow, but I have it, so I'd like to use it and I'd like to treat myself and wear some Tom Ford lipsticks around the house. Hey, when else if not now, really? perk me up central over here. This is a little Dior sample that also came with some sort of a code gift with purchase or something like that or some gift. This is a red. I remember selecting it actually because it was a red. I think you got a choice of like a few things, you know, a few colors or a few different items. And I love red lipstick and I figured why not have a red lipstick from Christian Dior? Like, who am I? These are all quite bright with the exception of Indian Rose. I guess most of my uh, high-end lipsticks tend to be quite colorful. Then I have a set of four lippies from Burberry and I did select this one again because it's spring, summer. I figured something bright and happy while I'm home. But honestly, I could probably swap in. If I see that I want a nude, I'll go for one of the more nudey ones. I think there's a red a nude, this fuchsia, and what is the other one? Burgundy, like a wine color. 
I think. Regardless, I have four of these. The one I decided to throw into this shop my stash is a matte. This is more of a matte. And I think the Yves Saint Laurent, which I just realized I haven't swatched for you guys. I'll do that in a second. So there is the Burberry. First of all, this is the magenta number 33. And these are called the liquid lip velvets. So there it is again. Let's go back and swatch the Yves Saint Laurent right down here across. These are so creamy. That's the only thing is they like melt almost instantly. And you kind of have to be careful because you can get this all over your teeth. I definitely usually blot it and then apply another layer. But there it is really really pretty it's a little messy but it's pretty and then last but not least i have a lipstick from bobby brown this is in plum rose 10 this is the rich lip color and this one is more fall appropriate but again luxury month it's like a beautiful mauve i mean yeah, it's a plummy mauve it's right there it's stunning. I actually am excited to use that, even though it's not really a spring color for me at all. But I love these colors anytime, anywhere, any place. I love mauves, and this one is not so dark that I can't wear it now. I think we went through all of my products that I've selected for the month of April. I hope you liked this idea of luxury month. I hope you might join me and do something like that, whether it's in April or in May or any month of the year or always, depending on what, of course, your preferences are and what you have in your collection. I thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you are all doing well, that your families and your loved ones are all safe. And I hope that this very indulgent video was fun and helpful in some way. With that, my friends, again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in some of my other videos, I will go ahead and link them for you. Thank you for all of your support and all of your comments and likes. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that you can stay updated on my future videos. I wish you an absolutely wonderful day and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.